All right, you guys, good evening and welcome in. Let's go ahead and get started in a child's pose. And if you're new, my name's Travis. Pleasure to have you with us tonight. We're going to do something very special and very different from what we normally do. And uh, we're going to move through a what we call yin yoga class. And I'll talk a little bit more about it, but... For now, just see if you can take a couple minutes as usual and just start to feel yourself just slipping in and shifting gears and just finding some well-deserved quietness and calmness before we just start to move our bodies. Now, in yin yoga, what we do is we hold deep stretches for anywhere from really three to five minutes. So there's a lot less poses, and it's less about quantity and a lot more just about quality. And as we hold these deep stretches, what happens is that we allow our connective tissues and we allow the fascia within our body to stretch and get exposed, to open up, and to also allow blood to flow through there. And it's really the perfect complement to the power yoga classes that normally we do. It's also the perfect complement to just the busyness of life. Life can be so hectic and so busy that, you know, within this kind of practice, we just really find the balance. We find stillness. We slow down. And as we say, no hurries, no worries. So just find that place within you where, you know, you're just primed for not needing to get anywhere, not needing to make anything happen, as you just start to shift from doing into being. And then just nice and easily, start to find that wave of breath, just coming in and out through the nose. As you start to invite the inhales down a little bit deeper and press the exhales out a little bit longer and just smooth the breath out so it has a quality of fluidity, and steadiness, and rhythm. And allow your breath this evening to really be the anchor for your mind. And anytime you notice the mind drifting down an alleyway that's just not associated with what we're here to do, just bring it back to that, that mantra of the breath. Before we start to move, just gently rock the forehead side to side, massaging the front of the brain and activating that trigger point right there at the front of the skull, almost like you're switching your brain off, getting out of thinking, and just coming back into more of an intuitive feeling connection. And with that breath and that flow, go ahead and ease your way all the way up. Tabletop pose all fours. Tuck the toes underneath the feet. And then downward facing dog, lift your hips all the way up to the sky. And then for this first downward facing dog, go ahead and walk your dog as you alternate one heel to the floor at a time, pedaling out through your feet, stretching out through your heels, your calves. And then nice and easily, Go ahead and float your right leg up to the sky as you inhale. And then right foot, top of the mat on the exhale, 
into a deep runner's lunge. Go ahead and relax your left knee onto the floor. Release the top of your left foot. Bring both hands to the inside of your right foot. And then slide your right foot a little bit over to the right. So a good couple of inches. Create some room. And then from here, just start bending your elbows and start crawling down towards the ground. And you always have the option, if you have a block, you can put the block underneath your hands, your forearms. Some of you may have one forearm down. Some of you may have two forearms down. Some of you may stay up on the hands. Just know that there's no one right way to do the pose. And don't even worry about what's going on around you. See if you can stay focused as to what's happening within, allowing your focus to stay contained within the bubble of this yoga mat. And I'll be monitoring the clock, and just know that the longer you hold, the deeper that you go. And the deeper that you go, the deeper that you heal, and the deeper you heal, the better you're going to feel. In a practice like this, we shift away from our sympathetic nervous system and we shift into the parasympathetic nervous system. We move away from fight or flight and we move into the relaxation response. Stress hormones like cortisol begin to drop and we really create this environment on a very deep level where healing can take place as if you're just recalibrating back to an internal balance and equilibrium. So you could say that patience is a virtue. And at any point in this practice, you could experience sweetness. You could experience intensity. You could experience boredom. You know, it, Chances are you might feel that, you know, just kind of moving around. So regardless of what your experience is, you just keep your breath steady. Keep your mind steady, present, mindful. As the poses change, the sensations change, your reactions to those change. And you just ride it out. Last few breaths here. Good, from here, go ahead and ease your way all the way up onto your hands. Bring your right hand to the outside of your right foot, and then take your right foot, slide it all the way over to the left side of your yoga mat. Let your right knee open out towards the right, and then take it into pigeon pose. So your left leg's long and straight behind. You might want to explore sliding your left knee back a little further. And then you turn that outer left hip down. Spiral the inner left eye up so your hips are neutral. And then you just let the weight of your torso with gravity just start to dissolve out across that front right leg. You can always take a block. You can throw that underneath the right hip. You could put it underneath the top of your left eye. You could also put one underneath your forehead. Really good to just let the weight of your skull be supported. And that'll just increase the potency of that relaxation component. And again, so much of the practice is how much can I let go? And as adults, it's really good we're really good at being attached to things and holding on and accumulating and gripping. Sometimes we lose the, the art and the ability to really just be able to attach and just let go. And by letting go, creating space. Space for new things to flow in. 
and allowing the things that are no longer in vibrational alignment with us to just fall to the wayside. And to have shraddha, to have faith that we will attract the very things that we need. Last few breaths there. You guys, go ahead and take your time. Slowly start to crawl all the way back up onto your hands, and then check this out. You're just going to lean into your right sit bone and then swing your left leg all the way up here towards the front wall. Grab your right leg, pick your right leg up, and then place it on top of your left leg and try and get your knees stacked right on top of each other. So we call this half cow pose. Keep the left leg straight out in front of you. Flex that front left foot. Take a big inhale, reach up through your arms. And then exhale, just start to fold over and down to your own degree. And if you're like me, this one feels pretty intense. You're going to feel it very deeply across the whole back of that left leg. And then there's that whole outer right hip, the piriformis, the IT band. So just keep your breath rolling in and out through your nose. And each exhale, just imagine that you're just allowing the tension, maybe stress that's locked up within the body, all of that just gradually just starting to melt away. There's this great story about this statue that existed in northern Thailand. And this particular statue was the prized possession of this whole entire village. Huge Buddha statue made out of solid gold, really bright and luminous. And one day these villagers caught wind that there was an invading army that was going to come through. And so all the villagers gathered together and they did everything that they could do to cover up this statue with mud and rocks and boulders. And it worked because when the army came through, they didn't even notice the statue. But they took all the villagers as refugees. And then many, many years had passed, and eventually there was another settlement that took place there. And one day this little girl was just playing, and out of the corner of her eye she caught this kind of tiny shaft, laser-like light penetrating throughout these rocks. So she went to explore the source of where this light was coming from. And she just started kind of chiseling away at all this hardened up rock and mud and clay. And the more that she peeled it away, the more that this light began to shine out. And she got all her friends and eventually the whole entire village and they were in on it, removing all these rocks until eventually this particular statue was restored back to its original glory. And this is such a great metaphor for what we do on our mat, that we're not trying to get something that we don't already have within us. All we're doing is removing the things that obstruct it, that stifle it, so that our own original glory can be expressed and can be seen. So the poses, the breathing, 
the meditation techniques, all of that is there. You just remove the things that are no longer serving you in a positive way. So go ahead and ease your way all the way back up to seated. Take that right foot and then bend it back by the outside of your right hip. So your right knee points forward. Bring your inner knees as close towards each other as they could be. And then just nice and easily lean back onto your hands or your forearms. Some of you, it may feel appropriate to come all the way onto your back. But try not to let your right knee lift off the ground. So that should remain connected to the floor. And then as well, you can always take a block and slide that underneath the left sit bone. Or you can always grab a blanket as well. So prop yourself up in a way that helps you find a place in the pose. And then know that there's good pain and there's bad pain in a pose. Bad pain has that sharp quality where bone is grinding into bone, which we never want. The good pain is muscular tension, like a knot or a kink within your muscle, and it's intense. But that pain is kind of what we're looking for. And with time, gravity, breath, and patience, the knot and the kink get worked out. The blood starts to flow through and the magic starts to happen. There's this chemical in our body called hyaluronic acid. And the more of this chemical that we have within our body, the more of a youthful and young quality our body will embody. And the only way that this chemical gets produced is through these long, slow, deep stretches. So it's not like we're burning a lot of calories or doing a lot of aesthetically appealing stuff right now, but on a deeper, more subtle level, there is a lot of magic that's taking place. And the proof in the pudding is how you're going to feel by the time we're done. And also the quality of your sleep that you'll have tonight and the way that you'll feel tomorrow. So we invite you to just continue to kick back. And just let that magic do its thing. Good. Those of you that are leaning back, take your time. Slowly start to prop yourself all the way back up. And then from here, just lean to your left. Extend your right leg out in front of you. Let that blood flush through that right knee. And just know that it's not uncommon at all right now to feel like you're 90 years old. That's part of the, the, the process of yin yoga. So lift your right foot up, set your right foot on top of your left knee, and then bend your left foot underneath your right knee, right thigh, both shins squared at the top of the mat. And there's a modification for this. If this doesn't feel good, you just come to easy cross-legged seated position, what we call sukhasana. You can also sit on a block and elevate your hips up. So you have those options as well. Once you get your lower body set, Inhale, reach both arms all the way up. And then exhale, just start to fold over and down to your own degree. So we all have that wall of tension. See if you can find your wall. And then instead of blasting your way through the wall, just try gently leaning into that wall. A lot of times when we force and we push too much, the body starts to 
go into a protective mode where it starts to harden up. And we're looking for the opposite effect. We're looking for a slow unwinding to take place. So instead of a force or a push, just let it be an invitation. Let it be an enticement. Last few breaths there. Awesome. From here, go ahead and ease your way all the way back up onto your hands. And then tabletop pose. So either roll across the knees or swing your feet around to the side and then come back to tabletop. Once you get to tabletop pose, slide your knees back about maybe three or so inches behind the hips. And then we'll take hip circles. So just start to circle your whole body around. And just see if you can just, you know, explore a little movement that's probably the perfect, perfect counter movement to what you just did. So a few times one way, a few times another way, just stretching out the largest joint in that body, your hips. All right, stuck the toes underneath the feet as you're ready. And then back to down dog, float the hips all the way up to the sky. And then left leg lifts up as you inhale. Left foot top of the mat on the exhale. Relax, right knee down onto the floor. Release the top of the right foot. Both hands to the inner left foot. Slide the left foot a little bit over to your left. And then just start climbing down towards the ground. Inner left foot, inner left leg. Now, it used to be several years ago, it was really, really hard to find a yin yoga class. But really in the last three or four years, it's really gotten way more popular. And we're seeing it being used quite a bit in mainstream professional athletics. You have MMA fighters that are using it, professional football players, all sorts of athletes are using this style because the trainers are now keyed into the fact that an athlete's body grows stronger in a state of rest. So just as important as the hard training is, the pendulum has to swing the other way, and as it does, 
that's where the body gets a chance to repair itself so that when that athlete trains next, their body is that much more strong and that much more adept. Keep your mind on the mantra of the breath. Keep the mantra of the breath on the mind. Anytime you notice your mind drifting off, you bring it back to that mantra. It's as if you've done a push-up inside of your brain. And you're literally reforming the neural nets inside of your brain, inside of your mind. And so you develop a greater capacity to focus, to concentrate, and to direct your mind where you choose it to go so that you own your mind instead of your mind or the five senses owning you. And instead of being a victim, you become completely empowered. You're running the show. And then you can stop feeding the negativity, the negative thoughts. And you can start feeding the positive, the uplifting thoughts. So this is the great path of yoga is that we have that choice. We have the choice to choose what it is that we want to create or what it is that we want to manifest or attract within our health, our careers, our relationships. And that we are the master of our own destiny. Good, you guys. Take your time. Slowly come all the way back up onto your hands. Left hand outside of your left foot. And then go ahead and slide your left foot all the way across to the right. Pigeon pose. Single leg, classical style pigeon. Take your time. Navigate your way into your sweet spot. Use props if you like. Previous pose was three minutes stretching the hip. This is another three minutes stretching the hip. Same areas, but a little bit of a different angle in there.
That's it for that one. Take your time. Propping yourself all the way back up. Lean into your left sit bone. Swing the right leg all the way up around towards the front. Grab your left leg, lift it up. Cross the left leg right on top of the right. Stacking both knees on top of each other. Arms to the sky. Inhale, feel that lift out of your waist. So get that, that levity. And then exhale, fold all the way over and down. And just reach down, grab whatever it is that you can get. And then in these forward bends, each inhale, try and pull your spine out a little further. And then each exhale, let your chest dip down a little bit deeper. Just taking little steps, moving deeper and deeper into the subtler tissues of the body. Again, nowhere to get to, nowhere to go. All I have to do is just breathe and be. Breathe and be. Awesome, you guys. Go ahead and crawl yourself, exiting out nice and easily. Uncross that top left leg. Take that left foot, bend it back by the outside of your left hip, and then bring your inner knees towards each other, and then just start leaning back to your own degree. And this side might feel different than the last side, so try not to take it for granted. Very often we are asymmetrical, and one side's going to be more open than the other. And just hone into those two qualities that are the real foundation for any healthy relationship, the qualities of communication and listening. And there's no question, there's no doubt that our body's communicating and speaking to us every single moment of our existence. The real question is, are we listening? Are we truly, truly listening? 
And that's why at the beginning of every yoga practice, we take that time to turn down the noise inside of the mind. And you could imagine your mind, you know, like if each thought was a car. For a lot of people, their mind is like the, the 405 freeway at rush hour, just jammed up with noise. Try and allow your mind to be more like a, a country road in the middle of the night where there's huge gaps between the passing of a thought, the passing of a car. And be very, very interested in those gaps, those spaces between the thoughts inside the mind, which are like little windows into stillness, to source, peace. And it's that stillness and that peace that's probably the foundation for all health and all well-being. Because you could have the greatest looking body on the planet, but if you don't have peace of mind, it doesn't matter. But in yoga, we strive to fire on all cylinders, to have a body that's strong but also supple, to have a mind that's calm and steady and serene, and to have a heart that's kind and generous and full of gratitude, just constantly counting those blessings. Good. Start to ease your way all the way back up to a straight vertical spine. And then just lean to your right. Extend that left leg towards straight for a moment. Just let the energy kind of move through that left knee. And then grab your left foot, pick it up, set it right on top of that right knee, setting up for double seated pigeons. So right foot bends underneath the left knee, left eye. Feel free to modify easy cross-legged seated position, especially if those hips feel really, really tight like concrete. And then as you're ready, both arms reach up sky high. And then fold over and down on the out breath to your own impeccable degree.
Nice. Go ahead and ease your way all the way back up. Extend your leg straight out in front of you along your yoga mat. And then let's all rotate our body facing over here towards the left side of the studio. As you rotate your body out here towards the left, go ahead and spread the legs out. So we'll set up for a seated straddle stretch. So just open your legs out as wide as feels right. And then one thing, see if you can get your kneecaps facing straight up to the sky. So for a lot of us, the knees kind of fall back a little bit. So there's a little bit of an internal rotation forward. Once you get the low body set, big inhale, reach up through those arms. And then exhale, fold over and down to your own degree. And you have a couple options with your hands. You can keep them straight out in front of you along the floor, or you could reach the hands out, grab your legs, your feet. If you're a little tighter, sometimes that helps because then it allows you to access a place that, you know, feels right. And then obvious, this is, this is a note on our scale that's for the inner legs, the inner thighs, the groin. And the whole sequence of what we're moving through tonight has been designed in a way that you touch every major joint and every major muscle in your body. So there's hips, the inner legs, the knees, the back, the spinal muscles, and the connective tissues throughout all those places get touched. And a lot of people are calling the connective tissue also the meridian tissue. And acupuncture and also Ayurvedic medicine, they believe that there's zillions of tiny little passageways called nadis or meridians that exist within our body. And this is how the body passes information, nerves, subtle information and intelligence through the body so that it can maintain homeostasis. And so when we open up these meridian tissues and we open up these subtle passageways, the body can much more effectively do what it needs to do to help you achieve health. A lot of us are familiar with the great motivational speaker, Tony Robbins, and one of his great mentors was a guy named Jen Rohn. And he had this quote that says, take care of your body. It's the only place that you have to live. Take care of your body. It's the only place that you have to live. And by taking care of our body, Horse is going to take care of us. And ultimately, it's all there to help us fulfill what the yogis call dharma, or our highest path, which is to be of service to other human beings, to help uplift, to give, to share. And the more that we align with that dharma, the brighter that our eyes shine, the more radiant our health is because we're tapped into purpose. Last few breaths.
Awesome, you guys. Go ahead. Crawl yourself all the way back up. And then bring your legs back together. Rotate your legs facing forward towards the front wall. And after that deep stretching, take a moment. Just kind of shimmy and shake the legs out. Just move the prana, move that chi around. Oh. And then both arms to the sky. Huge inhale. Lift them high. Get that length. Get the height. And then exhale. Fold over and down into a seated forward bend. And although this pose doesn't, you know, really look impressive from the outside, you know, they actually say it's one of the four most important poses in all of yoga. So there's thousands of postures. So the fact that a lot of the great yogis believe this makes the top four says a lot. One of the reasons is you're stretching the whole entire back line of the body. Your heels, your calves, the backs of the knees, hamstrings, glutes, spinal muscles, all the way up to the base of the skull, the top of the neck. And also there's a component to it where you're physically folding inward. So much of our day, we're looking outside of ourselves. And we're being bombarded by all this external stimulation that this becomes a great opportunity to, again, to find balance. And just like an astronaut explores outer space, the yogi was very interested in exploring the inner space the inner world of the mind. And through that inquiry and that inner exploration always comes a deeper connection and relationship to self. And chances are the deeper our relationship happens within ourselves, then the more that our outer relationships will flourish as well. On some level, this is way more challenging than a power yoga class. Because at least that has a lot of movement, a lot of intensity. This is a whole other kind of challenge. It's a mental challenge. And just like you can exercise, you can also exercise. And it's not easy to break that monkey mind, that mind that just likes to jump relentlessly from one thought to the next. But again, you're literally pulling neural nets apart and reforming them into certain patterns that are conducive to you being in control, to you calling the shots. But that process isn't easy. It was never supposed to be easy. So just know that if that's your experience tonight or any time that you do this practice, it's pretty much par for the course, part of the process, and part of the journey. Last few breaths. Good. Take your time, slowly ease your way all the way back up to seated. Release down onto your back, recline all the way back. And then as you get onto your back, 
reach down, grab your shins, squeeze your knees. Again, your spine's going to feel sensitive right now. The connective tissues take a long time to open up, and then they take a long time to contract. So that's what you're feeling when you feel that kind of dull, achy soreness. Both feet flat on the ground, about the width of the hips. Slide your heels close in towards your hips, and then we'll take it into a bridge pose. And if you have a block nearby, you could certainly slide the block underneath the low back and come into more of a supported bridge. Otherwise, just go ahead and lift your hips up. Roll the shoulders underneath and in. So you tuck the right shoulder, left shoulder under. And then options for the hands. A lot of people like to interlace the fingers, draw the arms towards straight. You could also reach down, grab your ankles. You could bend your elbows, hands face the ceiling, and then drive down through your triceps and your elbows. You could bring your arms up over your head. So whatever feels right. And just start to complement the forward bends that you just did. Just a nice, easy back bend. Each inhale, allowing your belly to balloon open. And each exhale, allowing the belly to deflate. Let's take that one last final inhale, and then lower slow, spine and back all the way down onto the ground. Grab your shin, squeeze your knees in. Keep your right knee hugged in. Extend your left leg straight out in front of you along the mat. Open your right arm out towards the right. Anchor your right shoulder blade into the floor. And then let your right knee just drape and twist all the way over to the left. So nice bent knee, reclining spinal twist. And chances are, right now I'm in a whole other place than when I came strolling through that door. Just in full-on relaxation mode. Bring the right knee all the way back up to neutral. Hug and squeeze both the right and the left eye back into the belly. Keep your left knee in. Extend your right leg out. Open that left arm out towards the left. And then just let that left knee come all the way across to the right, releasing any unwanted tension through the back and the spine. Bring that left knee all the way back up to middle. Hug and squeeze both knees back into the belly. And then finally, 
Take one last big inhale. Curl the forehead up to the knees. Give your whole body one last big squeeze. And then Shavasana, exhale. Release, relax. All the way onto your back. Into that final place of rest, of comfort, of ease, and ultimately the the greatest yin pose of them all. Let your breath soften. Let your whole body just start to melt down into the ground. Allow your brain and your mind to completely soften. And for these last few minutes, just see how deep you can fall into that rabbit hole of stillness. Shavasana.
easily to start to slip back into that sensation of the body being held, supported by the ground. Just coming back to that easy, organic flow of the breath, and that easy, organic pulse of the heart. And then go ahead and reach the arms all the way up over your head. Interlace the fingers. Turn the palms inside out. Just bring in with you what you so beautifully just dove into. Reach down, grab the shins, hug and squeeze the knees and the thighs into the belly. And then roll over onto your left side. Take a a few breaths there. The left side of the body is the yin channel. And slowly press yourself all the way up to a last final cross-legged seated position where we'll seal the practice. Once you get up to seated, bring your hands all the way up to prayer right in front of your heart. Sit up tall. Keep the eyes closed. And then with the hands in prayer position, bring your indexes all the way up to that spot right between the eyebrows as you give gratitude to the practice for invoking clarity of mind. And then bring the hands down to the mouth, giving gratitude to the practice for invoking an upliftment of speech and words and language. And then hands back to prayer in front of the heart, giving gratitude to the practice for just bringing you back home within your body to a place of unshakable security, certainty, knowingness, truth, strength, and power. One last final ohm. Take a big inhale through the nose. Much health, much wealth, much love to you. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Namaste.